One of the two turret fighters put into service by the British during the Second World War, the Bolton Paul Defiant did eventually find its niche in the defence of the UK. FX make one in one seventy second scale. I've got one to build. Find out how I did it right here on Gary Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel, welcome back if you've been here before. Today is build day on Kit of the Week. That kit is the Airfix Bolton Pool to fight in one seventy second scale. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these and you just want to know what you get in the box for your money, there's already a build video available on my channel. If you've got one in your stash or you've ordered one, want to know how to put it together, this is very much the video for you. Now, if you like the video, and I hope you do, Please remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it's published. And of course, if you'd like to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online partner programs. Now, one of those programs is the FX Affiliate Program. If you follow the link in the information box below, to the FX online store, buy anything at all there, then at no extra cost to you, FX will donate some of their income to the running of this channel. And you can still get your FX club card discount if you're a member, and you will still be able to collect all your hobby reward points if you collect them too. This kit, incidentally, was donated to the channel by Joe Olmo. So Joe, thank you very much, my friend. This one's for you. So let's make a start and have a look at how I built my Bolton Pool Defiant in 172nd scale from Airfix. Now you'll see I've primed and given a wash to the inside here. So now we can just start assembling some of these interior pieces. This is some sort of, I guess that's an oil tank or glycol tank behind the engine here. Yeah. And there's this piece goes in here and it holds the throttle quadrant apart from other things. Just a bit of bit of extra thin to hold it in place. The cockpit assembly and the back wall of the cockpit fits onto the cockpit floor like so then the seat goes in it slots into the sort of holes on the back like so you see the holes are filled up then the rudder pedals can go on here And the control column sits on the front of the seat, like so. The instrument decal can go onto the instrument panel. I'll do it while it's on the frame still, because it's easier to maneuver around and let that settle in. And the cockpit floor can sit into the side of the cockpit, like so. got to go into that hole there that's a slot that needs to go in there because it won't fit other there we go it won't fit otherwise there we go that's good that's good the instrument panel goes onto this sort of strange black shelf sort of affair there um I'll show you on the other side here it's this black piece you put in here, and it's got this shelf here and that's what the instrument panel sort of sits into and that it's quite bizarre I suspect we're going to have to play around with that when we try and attach the two halves of the fuselage 
then also the support for the rear turret goes in rests up against the back of the bulletproof shield there for the pilot the armor plate and sits up like that and you'll notice this um, rear bulkhead here sits quite a long way forward sort of leans forward quite a lot that's that's intentional apparently okay now with all of those bits in place we can put the two fuselage halves together okay the main sort of anchor points are got little dabs of glue on them we'll start assembling the two halves and this this is going to be the pain here so let's lift that up a bit and let's see if move it up and forward a bit to be honest this is going to be quite tricky might have to do that part again i really don't understand why it's done this way but there we go it's not my kit to uh, tell them what to do I guess I'm there I'm gonna leave that just backwards like that you see I don't like to get these other parts too much set in stone because things like this really upset the old proverbial apple cart. Okay, I guess that's it. That's about right. That's kind of right. I think. Yeah, that'll do. That will do. So we're going to tape up these bits and then start putting in some clamps as well. And um, put some extra thin along those seams. With wings, first of all, you fit the undercarriage bay here just clips onto the top of the what well, the top of the inside part of the wing and then the two halves of the wing just clip into place like so on each side there's a couple of pegs and holes in there i've put some glue on the rest i'll tape up and extra thin in the usual way and all taped up and clamped up we'll leave it till the morning to set there's this uh, fillet that goes in here now what what this is is um when the airfield aircraft just sort of cruising along this sort of vaguely streams lines the turret and the guns would be trained along here for four and a half to take off and landing but then when you got to combat these this panel will drop down so the turret could rotate that's this is going to be on the ground it'll be fore and aft so this part's lifted up then we can put the wing section on a little bit of glue there and about and it goes in now the odd thing for me is that this the back end of this doesn't sort of meet up very well but i think we put a piece over that so that will be okay um, but the back here joins up very nicely and indeed the wings sit actually pretty well so that's good leave that to dry three the characteristic triangular rudder of the defiant goes on the back like so then the tail planes horizontal stabilizers if you will clip into place like so we'll just build the radiator now and the radiator elements are quite, quite handily listed front and back which is very good and the the uh, radiator element goes into the housing like so and we get a touch of our old friend the extra thin cement just in there no no make sure it's absolutely upright i 
I think same for the back as well. Now we'll paint the inside of this in um, sky and the faces here in uh, whatever they suggest. I don't know if it's gunmetal or steel. And back here in sky as well. And the same on the bottom of the plane. Uh, probably won't ever see these again, but you know, you might just catch a few of them. So might as well do it. And we'll do the same thing with the, uh, the I don't know if it's the carburetor air inlet or the oil cooler that sits in the front as well. Okay, so first of all, we're going to put this um, oil cooler come air inlet, carburetor air intake on. Now the interesting thing is you try and fit it to um to look right at the back here you can see it's got that little step in it and you you know you try and think oh how's that going to go oh my god i'm going to have to do all sorts of things with that however um if you look at the instructions here you can see it doesn't actually look like it sits completely flush so I'm going to go with that that looks fine to me and it sits okay that way um, and then the uh, radiator that's got a very definite place it sits um, we just put some some glue going there Okay, that's the bottom of the plane done for the moment. Um, I'm going to do the undercarriage and all that later. So what I need to do now is put the canopy on. I'm having the canopy closed over as if it's parked up for the night. You can have it with the, uh, with the canopy drawn back. I'm not going to do that because I haven't put belts, seat belts in and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to have it with the canopy over as if it were parked for the night. Now with the canopy, I have got a canopy mask set pre-cut. You can see, oh yeah, okay. you can see all the bits of pre-cut. This also does the turret as well. In 170 seconds, I just cannot, cannot be hand painting these things. I know a lot of you do, and a lot of you are very, very good at it. I'm not, so I'm going to use a mask and spray my kit. Three. There is a slightly tricky bit here with the um, with the masks. There's a, a lower panel and then there's a tiny strip panel here, which is it's really difficult to see where they go. So what I suggest you is put the bottom panels on first. That gives you a gap and then just put the strip panels like halfway in the gap. Then it doesn't really matter whether or not you can see the frame edges because it it's, uh, evens out and it will look fine. So that's the thing to do. put these panels in first, then the strip panels in halfway. Then we can slot the canopy on. I'm going to use a PVA type glue to hold it in place. So we need to let that dry. It'll take some time. Now with uh, everything blocked up and ready to go, I'm going to start priming the kit with black. Well, I'm now going to try what they, they've called RF Beige Green. I'm guessing this is supposed to be Sky, so let's see how it goes on.
And I've, al I've already put on the brown coat. I'm now going to put on the green on top for the camouflage. Building the guns now and the gun turret. Um, it's a four gun turret, so there's two pairs of two guns and they're linked by this bar which you just glue between them. Right, the way I figured to do it is you put the two halves of the mounting kind of together, but then just leave a gap at the top and then grab the guns, slot them in. And you can close the mounting like so. This piece fits in here. This is the gunner sits upside down at the moment. Now, if you're putting the actual gunner in, you don't put this piece in. You might not want to anyway, because it's a little bit fiddly. Yeah, there you go, like that. Then the guns go in here. Like so, on their mounting. Now, I am going to let this dry. Okay, let this dry. Paint everything. Paint the, the all the surrounds. Put a little uh, leather seat on there. Paint the guns and gun metal. Obviously, everything else I think is black. And then I'll put the turret on, and then we'll go back to the aircraft. Uh, the undercarriage goes in, like so the main leg goes in first, like so. Then the strut goes in like this, and that goes into the side of the main leg, just there. Then finally, the knee of the oleo goes in here, like so. And we'll let that set, uh, do the other side before we put the wheels on. While we're here, there's a, an aerial pole that can go in here. Now there's another aerial pole that goes at the back. Now if you're doing the aircraft in flight, then the pole which sits in here extends all the way out. I think there's an, an interlock with the undercarriage. Um, when you select undercarriage down, the poles are attracted. Um, so if you're doing the aircraft on the ground or with the gear down in any way, you need to cut this pole off around so that sort of length. So it's just a stub sticks out of here so that the tail wheel sits um, so it doesn't foul with this when you're landing. And the tail wheel can go in as well. The main wheels can go onto the hubs as well. And there is a little piece of a flat spot there. So there is a, the hubs are shaped so that these tire sits with the flat spot at the right angle. And the gear doors can go on as well. The inner door just goes onto this section here. So, right to assemble the propeller, the propeller assembly sits in the back of the spinner. Then a back plate goes on, like so. Then the axle goes through here, like so and into the back of the propeller, like so. Okay. Then the whole assembly goes into the nose of the aircraft, 
like that. And the exhaust stubs can go in here. I've painted them in burnt metal. I'm just going to give them a brush down in a bit with some a uh, bit of rust and some engine soot. You slide the turret over the turret ring like so, glue it into place and take the masks off. Then the rear turret can just slip into its place at the back of the fuselage. And there it is. Make sure it's fore and aft. It should be when it's landing. And the turret is in. And so there we have it. The Bolton Pool Defiance in one seventy second scale from FX. Um, it's a lovely little kit of a, a very strange little aeroplane. Um, you know, it's all right. It goes together in the main very well. Um, it's not too desperately fiddly. Not that you'd believe it looking at the design of the aircraft. And it produces a nice enough result. The uh, panel lines are fine. I haven't used, actually, I don't think I've used any filler anywhere, really, on this plane. Maybe a tiny bit on some of the upper seams, but nothing major. Um, an enjoyable build. A straightforward one. And not a bad result, I think. There we go then. You know, very few issues. It's a relatively simple kit. Maybe a, a tiny step up from your average like Hurricane or Spitfire and something a little bit more unusual, but at a comfortable scale and relatively straightforward to put together with no major issues, I found at least along the way. So I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please do remember. Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hope to see you again very soon on the channel. Take very good care and goodbye.